Hello and welcome to episode 29 of the podcast. I'm Michael. I'm Noah. And we are the Knights of Entertainment, a podcast covering your favorite and unknown movies, games, comic books, anime, and more weekly. We appreciate you being here and hope you enjoy the show. This is what we are covering tonight. Uh, we are going over the hierarchy of DC Comics. But before we do, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. You can enjoy this show on YouTube, Spotify, Rumble, Odyssey, and more. We also have membership tiers on those platforms as well if you'd like to support the channel. Or you can check out buymeacoffee.com forward slash KOE podcast. But let's go ahead and get into this. Alrighty, so... We are going over the power hierarchy of DC Comics. Mm -hmm. From the most powerful to some kind of farther down the list. Um... The power rankings, basically, for DC Comics has shifted. Some of it's opinion, some of it is not. But for the most part, these are the set order, for the most part. Uh, And this, uh, the first part that we're going to be talking about was a hierarchy that happened before this latest reboot. (laughs) As DC Comics, we all know how much they love their reboots. Fucking reboots every 20 days. Fuck. (laughs) <laughs> this is uh, during the uh, the New 52 era. So. See, if they just stuck... Well, I kind of like the New 52 because it was fresh. And then they're like, well, let's just go back to normal. Let's, do, let's change it back again. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> god dang. So, uh, during this... It, it, just as a... Um, a placeholder of where we're at in DC Comics reboot histories and stuff. Mm-hmm. This is going to be like right after... Uh, like before the the latest uh, uh, reboot, but into the new Fifty Two series, so it's not like as soon as it happened, it's further into it. Okay. All right. So uh, we have the top fifteen in that hierarchy. Uh, going from number fifteen, we have a uh, character called the Ultimator. The Ultimator. Yeah, I remember him. Remember the Ultimator? Yeah, didn't he have like the anti-Ultimator or some shit? Uh, there was some weird... Or was it the Monitor and the Anti-Monitor? It was the Monitor and okay, the Anti-Monitor. Okay, my bad. The Ultimator is one of the most powerful entities in the DC Universe. The monster is a living embodiment of the 10th dimension, the ultimate dimension of all. Its powers are practically unfathomable and described as godlike. The creature has the ability to warp reality, manipulate time, manipulate dimensions, and shapeshift. Ultimator is a vicious predator type monster. Uh, it has the ability to, to devour entire realities. It believes its <laughs> destiny. <laughs> like, all, you just eat all of existence. Is what, Pretty much, Jesus yeah. Jesus Christ. Uh, it believes its destiny is to consume all of the other dimensions and life forms and make everything a part of itself. Ultimator is an enemy of the fifth dimension imps. By the time it reached the fifth dimension, Ultimator claims that it has already completely destroyed four other dimensions. Uh, basically, the imps, aside from Mr. Mixbidlick, was basically no no threat to him whatsoever. Well, damn. <laughs> sure is a threat to everyone else on regular Earth. Pretty much, because you know we're all fucked when that happens. Those imps come out, and he's like, yes, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Mix uh, uh, Miss, uh, Mr. Mitspitalik is fucking with Superman all the time. <laughs> uh, going up to number 14, we have Mr. Mitspitalik. <laughs> I'm just that guy. Uh, Mr. Mixy Spitalik is an imp from the fifth dimension. Uh, the main heroes of the DC universe exist in the third. In the third dimension, he's considered extremely powerful. Uh, and when the imp visits the third dimension, he has unlimited powers to warp reality and basically do whatever he wants. He is not limited by the physical laws of the dimension, and he also cannot be seriously harmed. Cheating. And he loves to fuck with Superman yeah. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> uh, going up from that, we have uh, number 13, Kismet. Uh, Kismet. The Kismet is a nigh-omnipotent cosmic entity of the DC universe. She possesses immense cosmic power and can pretty much do whatever she pleases, like manipulate time, space, and reality. Plus, since she is not affected by the passage of time, she's mortal. Uh, Kismet is supposedly the literal embodiment of time and also serves as a protector of the DC universe. The full extent of her powers is unknown since she rarely appears in the comic books. Hmm. And obviously, uh, it's a very unknown name, so yeah, most people don't know who the hell she is. I thought Tom was just a human construct. Well, apparently, it took on a, a, a form. Okay. <laughs> uh, next up, we have uh, Krona. Uh, Krona is an Owen born of the ancient planet Maltus. 
He was uh, once a scientist that sought to uh, create order in the galaxy. Corona became obsessed with discovering as much knowledge as possible. He was warned never to try to discover the origins of the universe or a terrible disaster would happen. However, he did the asshole, the he, he, he ignored the warning <laughs> and created a machine that allowed him to see the beginning of time itself. It's like kids where it says, like, don't touch it, it's hot. Like, oh, is it though? Oh. Let, me, <laughs> let me check with my face. <laughs> Uh, Krona, uh, he managed to glimpse uh, the beginning of the creation, but then the universe completely shattered. This created the DC multiverse and unleashed the concept of evil into the cosmos. You son of a bitch. Krona was punished by his fellow Owens. He was turned into pure energy and condemned to wander the universe forever. Krona's wicked actions inspire the Owens to become the guardians of the galaxy. Or gu- guardians of the universe. <laughs> guardians of the galaxy. <laughs> guardians of the galaxy. We got to see that movie. <laughs> I heard. I heard it's rough to watch. Uh, the same thing I heard too. Man, just just dark. <laughs> uh, up from that, we have uh, Anti Monitor. Oh, okay, there he is. The Anti Monitor is uh, Anti Monitor is one of the most powerful villains in the entire DC universe. He has the ability to absorb the energy of his surroundings. He can even absorb the energy of an entire universe to increase his own power. The Anti Monitor is the main villain of DC's uh, Crisis on an Infinite Earths. Uh, the crossover event uh, effectively destroyed the DC Universe's multiverse. That bastard. Uh, he possessed a superhuman strength and durability, even withstanding direct punches from Superman and a blue star going supernova. Damn, he can take those hands? Yes, he can. Damn. <laughs> and probably give his own. That's all Superman's got those hands. <laughs> Sometimes that's all he needs. Uh, the villain can also emit bolts of destructive energy and warp reality. On top of that, he has access to highly advanced technology capable of shifting, merging, or destroying entire universes. The Anti-Monitor has killed more people than any other known supervillain. He has also killed billions including Barry Allen and Supergirl two of Earth's strongest uh, superheroes that was redundant he's, like, he's killed more people than anyone he's also killed billions exactly. yeah I figured, yeah, I figured as much. much yeah yeah the description of him is yeah it's, it's like okay and <laughs> uh, number 10 uh, Superman Prime. I thought Barry ran so fast he just died oh he uh, outran the black racer or something they yeah. turned into a skeleton yeah yeah, and burned up. <laughs> just fucking, his, like he just he just had. He should have been going through pizza places or something, getting more food as he's running. <laughs> uh, number ten, we have Superman Prime One Million. Superman Prime One Million. Holy mm-hmm. shit! Uh, Superman may be the most powerful superhero on Earth. However, the Kryptonian is nothing compared to his cosmic entities in the DC universe. Nevertheless, there isn't an alternate version of Superman that can compete with the gods. He is the Superman of Earth. Wait, he can already compete with the gods in a normal state. Uh, this is beyond, like, this is competing with the actual, like, ethereal forms of the gods. Oh. Um, he is the Superman of the 853rd century, also known as Superman Prime oh, 1 million. He's old as fuck. What if, what if, what if, what if, okay, what if, okay, he's old, right? And he he takes forever to, to age, right? Mm-hmm. What <laughs> what if his that, that form of him, right, looks like Eustace from Coward Curse and Cowardly Dog, just old as fuck looking, but he's still powerful. <laughs> well, he doesn't look old. And that's what I'm saying. It'd be hilarious <laughs> if he looked like Eustace. <laughs> like, what's your offer? <laughs> uh, the Superman apparently left Earth after he watched all his friends and family die. He traveled the entire DC universe and even reached the realms of heaven and hell. He then spent 15,000 years inside of a yellow sun absorbing its energy. Damn. When he finally emerged, he was completely golden. He already uh, His already impressive powers like super strength, speed, and vulnerability, heat vision, were magnified to nearly infinite levels. He also gained even more abilities during his time in the sun. He manages basically to be able to res- uh, resurrect Lois Lane at one point. Why to get that? Why to get that? <laughs> Why to get himself a piece? <laughs> After all this 50, 15,000 years, he still brought back Lois. Like, yo, girl, what's up? <laughs> Man, she must have had that good. <laughs> 15,000 years. He simped for that long. Yeah. <laughs> like, he was willing to hold out for 15,000 years. <laughs> Just to get the. And then he's the, like, I can bring her back to life. <laughs> he wanted those viscous, uh, viscous innards that badly. Jesus. <laughs> Superman's a dog. <laughs> uh, next up from that, we have the Endless. 
Uh, the Endless is a family of seven very powerful beings. The group appears in the uh, Sandman comics. Uh, they represent the abstract concepts of destiny, death, dream, destruction, desire, despair, and delirium. Their exact origins are unknown. However, the Endless are supposedly the children of time and night. It is believed that they existed since the dawn of time. Uh, they are some of the most powerful beings in the entire universe. However, the Endless are different from gods. They are natural forces or physical embodiments of aspects of the universe. They existed before gods and other supernatural beings. The family of seven might even be more powerful than the gods within the DC universe. Each member of the Endless has its own realm where they have absolute power and sovereignty. Hmm. Uh, also, one thing that they don't add on this, but uh, every being of the Endless also controls the opposite of their name. So, um, destiny is free will. Death is life. Dream is nightmare. Every, hmm. every one of them has, also controls the opposite. But apparently they don't want to describe that. So. <laughs> I got tired. It was three in the morning. <laughs> they couldn't type anymore. Uh, next up, we have Doctor Manhattan. Ah, uh, Doctor Manhattan, just fucking blue dick swinging. Uh, DC Rebirth has brought the characters from the series Watchmen into the main DC universe. This includes Doctor Manhattan, one of the most powerful beings in existence. Doctor Jonathan Osterman was once a nuclear physicist. He was trapped in a radioactive particle test. The force of the generator tore him to pieces and vaporized him. He appeared to be dead. However, he was actually taken outside the physical realm and later returned with power so strong they were basically godlike. <laughs> Dr. Manhattan has the ability to control all matter at a subatomic level. He is also clairvoyant, experienced time in a non-linear quantum fashion. On top of that, he also has super strength, telekinesis, and the ability to teleport himself over planetary and interplanetary distances. Super strong, basically. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and he was able to fuck with the entire DC universe, so... Apparently. <laughs> uh, next up, we have Eclipso. Eclipso is that high up? Mm -hmm. Damn. Eclipso is the embodiment of the Abrahamic God's wrath. Uh, he is a magical being of nearly unlimited strength, though it is still nothing compared to his creators. He has the ability to fly, emit death rays of dark light from his left eye, and emit a paralyzing ray of black light from his right eye. Eclipso is immortal and invulnerable, and also enhanced speed, strength, and intelligence. He also is a master swordsman and wields an unbreakable sword. Eclipso is tasked uh, to punish the wicked. He caused a great flood that destroyed the entire world, except for Noah's Ark. However, he became evil and was stripped of his rank by God. He is eventually replaced by another one of God's creations, the Spectre, who represents divine vengeance rather hmm. than wrath. The more you know. <laughs> that explains why the Eclipso tried to manipulate Spectre, Spectre. during the, yeah. the Day of Vengeance series. Yeah, mm -hmm. He don't really like him too. <laughs> it's like, you motherfucker, you took my, pot, my, my spot within the hierarchy. If I take a female form, I'll never know, but whatever. <laughs> Well, he possessed a female form anyway. Yeah. Still a dude. But uh, let's not get into the political part of that right now because that. Well, I wonder. Just be messing with those titties all the time. That's probably what he did. Just grabbing his own tits. Probably. <laughs> Is that what you would do if you had that? Uh, just sit there and play with them. <laughs> as fat as I am, I have them now. What are you? So no. <laughs> a solid D cup. <laughs> <laughs> we can get you one of those bros. Not a bra, but a bro. <laughs> it's not the bra, but the bro. <laughs> uh, number six, we have the Decreator. The Decreator is a cosmic entity that has the ability to make things disappear from existence. You don't exist. Watch, I had that, but you don't exist. It is the shadow of God. The Decreator was born when God was making the universe and uttered the phrase, let there be light, which created the first shadow. The Decreator, represented by a giant bloodshot eye, is a force of pure destruction. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> it has no sense of morality, no personality, and no emotions. It cannot be reasoned with, nor can it be truly defeated. The Decreator did... So, uh, Karen. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be destroyed or, <laughs> or defeated. <laughs> or reasoned with. Or reasoned with. <laughs> Office <laughs> uh, members of the DC superhero team, the Doom Patrol, were able to slow it down, uh, down the rate at which it destroys existence. Uh, but the Decreator continues to silently erase things out of existence, but does so so slowly that humanity does not notice it. That would be wild. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'll give you this one for free, DC. Say they do a, a wide, long 
year long, year, maybe like maybe two year long mm-hmm. mini series, but not a, a secret mini series where everyone thinks there's no big event coming for DC, right? But that that character, right, takes little by little, little by little, and then like for some magic, you know, they they keep like uh, uh, uh like they have they'll have all these series, right? Mm-hmm. Like oh, you got issue uh, seventeen of the Flash, and then all of a sudden they drop the Flash it's issue eighteen, and they stop talking about the Flash, and then they stop talking about you know this and that, and like little by little, right? Well, they probably have to be more subtle than that. Yeah, they'd be like more small characters than like a big one, and then finally you find out oh. Uh, Batman or some probably Batman because Batman's like always like I knew it was him I know it was everybody <laughs> his plan started just going away slowly what the hell <laughs> like maybe he'll ask Alfred something right and he'd be like uh, like who's that Master uh, Bruce and he's like what what do you mean who's that <laughs> they start like, I'm losing my memory <laughs> And then, and then it comes out to be the D creator. Right, like and then like yeah, like then the miniseries starts and like that would be fucking wild if nobody knew what was happening, right? But they they won't do anything like that. Yeah, they will. They got DC. the balls it's, for it. it. It's DC. They're not gonna do anything. Like just like little that, by little, just like you know, first it'll be like a a town that in DC. Then it'll be like a character, a minuscule character, and then this and that. And like people are like, then you don't tell the the where, fans. Like, where you could start. You could stop talking about Bloodhaven. Right, like little by little, little yeah. by little. Like maybe you'll make it prominent at the beginning and then gone, gone, gone. And then everybody's like, this is getting weird. Like I haven't heard about you know this and that for a while. And then all of a sudden. There it is. And then if they go back and check the specific panels, they'll see stuff that didn't notice before. It's fucking beautiful. See, but again, DC doesn't have that kind of creativity now. So I just gave it to them for free. But they don't care. They don't want it for free. Even. No, they'll take it. <laughs> it's like, yeah, this is all our idea. I don't care. <laughs> I can prove it's mine. <laughs> just make good content. Uh, next up from that, we have the Spectre. Uh, the Presence, a.k.a. the main god of the DC Universe, created a cosmic entity that represents his divine vengeance rather than his wrath. This entity is also known as the Spectre. The Spectre uses his divine powers, including the ability to, mi- to manipulate time and space and control all matter to, push, uh, to punish the wicked. The force behind the Spectre uh, was created by Aztar, a demon who returned to heaven and confessed to sins. The, speed fo- the Spectre Force... That'd be some weird sins to... <laughs> <laughs> the specter force must bond to a human soul in order to judge wickedness fairly three humans have been the specter james corgan hal jordan and crispus allen the specter's power is vast however it is not limitless he does not have the power to do whatever he pleases his power is limited by the voice of god and divine law, the law. but he can basically do almost anything that, else that he wants that god dang red tape <laughs> if only i could get past that red tape yeah, but that red tape is pretty far out there because he was able to destroy yeah, all magic. Quite a lot of stuff, yeah. <laughs> destroy the the current age of magic. Through a fucking rock of magic on Earth. Like, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> so it takes a lot for that red tape to show up. Uh, next up, we have uh, Lucifer Morningstar. <laughs> I guess who's next? Uh, Lucifer and Morningstar is a nigh-omniscient. Uh, nigh Are we going from highest theme. to lowest, or? Uh, backwards. So we're going from lowest to highest? Mm-hmm. Jesus. Lucifer is pretty high up here. God dang. He's number four. So number, what is it? Number two is Batman. Number one is Batman with prep time? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I've seen a lot of polls that do have that, though. It's like, he beats everybody with prep time. <laughs> How much prep time you need? <laughs> As much as he wants. Just sitting. I don't know. What about giving him, a, him a, like a bigger, bulky feel? Like I'm just. I need prep time. He's big. Big ass fucking Batman. Like fucking six foot nine. He's <laughs> playing on a tiny ass computer. <laughs> One of those little palm pilots. Yeah. <laughs> just don't really type it. <laughs> That'd be the weirdest shit. Be funny as hell. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Lucifer Morningstar is a nigh omniscient divine being. The character is loosely based on Lucifer of the Abrahamic scriptures. Oh, is he? Uh, yeah, exactly. I had no idea. <laughs> He's an archangel and the son of the presence, DC's version of God. When Lucifer rebelled against the kingdom of heaven, he was cast out and sent to rule over hell. After ruling over the demons and damned souls of the, dem- the domain for countless years, he eventually grew bored, abandoned hell, and retired to Earth in Los Angeles. He's like, deuces, bros. <laughs> Lucifer's power is only matched by his brother. 
uh, and is only exceeded by his father and his uh, his daughter or his uh, sorry his niece. Uh, while Michael represents the power of God, Lucifer represents God's will. Lucifer can shape matter into anything he desires. However, unlike his brother and father, he cannot create anything out of nothing. Damn. But he can basically alter it however he wants. If he's second only to them. Second only to them and his niece. What about him? all these other beings that are, are still like a lot left, aren't they? No. Oh. Number four. Okay, okay. Like I said, this is the uh, slightly older hierarchy, yeah. so they've tried to change some shit now, which is annoying. Uh, up from that, we have Michael uh, Demurgos. Uh, Michael is the DC counterpart of the Archangel Michael. Uh, he is the son of DC's version of God, the Presence. As an angel, he has an enhanced strength, speed, stamina, agility, and the ability to fly. On top of that, his father granted him the uh, Dunamis Demurgos. Uh, Dunamis Demiurgos, the power of God. Uh, he is also immortal, though another divine being can seriously injure or kill him. Uh, Michael is nigh omnipotent. Uh, he is supposedly the second most powerful being in the entire universe right after his father. He has managed to defeat beings such as the Spectre. However, his brother Lucifer also matches him in power. Lucifer, uh, is, uh, Michael has the power to create anything from nothing. He does not have the power to give it shape, though. Uh, he would just basically need his brother's powers to do it. So whenever basically the presence came into an existence, when he created the two of them, he created one to create stuff, one to shape it. I that a weird thing to do? A little bit. <laughs> number two is a little controversial, but it makes more sense at number two. We have Elaine Bellick. Elaine Bellick. Elaine Bellick is the daughter of Archangel Michael. Uh, this makes her the ha a half angel and a direct descendant of God. Uh, when her father's die, she absorbs his power and gains the Duminus. Uh, the Duminus Maximus. Yep. AKA the power <laughs> of God. Uh, she then takes over for the pre uh, the presence, the main God of the DC universe that rules over creation and assumes the throne of God. From this point on, she is stated to be the most powerful being in the universe. She is omniscient, omnipresent, and omnipot uh, omnipotent. Uh, she has the same powers as the Presence and Archangel Michael. However, she has much less experience. Uh, she has to discover many of her powers on her own. And Elaine does not uh, always fully comprehend her powers. and does not have the complete control over the ability that she inherited from Michael. Hmm. <clears throat> so that's why she'd technically be higher than Lucifer and Michael. Because she's the new like god, basically. Since she took over that ability. And then we have number one, the presence. I was like a Batman. <laughs> Batman. <laughs> no, but most people would try to probably put Batman at number one. It wouldn't <laughs> surprise me one bit. <laughs> but no, it's uh, it's the presence. Uh, in the history of the DC universe, the presence is the ultimate creator, the source of all things. Often presented as a fictionalized counterpart to the god of the Abrahamic religions, in particular. He is often given Christian attri uh, Christian attributes. However, the religious cosmology of the Omniverse is complex, with many pantheons of gods coexisting alongside of each other within the DC Universe. Uh, it includes elements from multiple religions, mythologies, and modern concepts such as the Endless. The Presence has taken numerous forms throughout the history and has many aspects, including the Voice, the Hand, and the Source. Uh, some of the names that he has went by within the DC Universe, we have Yahweh, the Source, Elohim, Hashem, the Creator, the Lord, Master Programmer, One Above All, the One Over All, Jehovah, Allah, Tetragrammaton, and the Light. Hmm. He's went by a lot of names within DC Universe. Before no, no one's ever asked him his real name, though. <laughs> What's funny is that the the picture of him is uh, with the bowler hat. <laughs> where, oh God! <laughs> where he's a little old man. <laughs> Uh, before existence, there was only a great darkness, a single black infinitude. Within that darkness, however, a single burning light was born. As it grew, the darkness screamed, resulting in an imperceivable flaw in the once immaculate perception of the light. And in that moment, the cosmos was born. As the voice, uh, the light created the word and the omniverse. In the process, it wrote its divine name into all creation on a sub-molecular uh, sub level, making the light present in all things. And this was taken up by um, 
what was it? Uh, and Brightest Day and Darkest Night series from uh, the Green Lantern series. And Brightest Day and Brightest Night. But there's the life entity, which is within all things in the DC universe. So that uh, that took part of that whole thing into it. Huh. I, mean, I tried to remember uh, the other lantern name ones. But I don't remember any of them anymore. You don't remember uh, the other uh, the other colors or the other names? The other name, the other uh, chance, I guess, for the other na- colors. They used to be awesome. Yeah, they each had their own. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody remembers in brightest day. Though. Even the Black Ranger or the Black Ranger, <laughs> even the uh, the Black uh, Green Lantern, the Black Green Lantern. <laughs> the Black <Green> Lantern. <laughs> <laughs> Even the Black Lanterns had one. Yeah. Was it, like, and then there was the White Lantern. Whenever. Over here licking Thomas Wayne's skull. <laughs> a Necron? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you nasty son of a bitch. <laughs> that was the nasty shit I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> all right. And uh, the Abrahamic co- uh, cosmology, his uh, first living creation. Wait, was it Bruce Wayne's skull he was licking? Uh, shit, I can't remember. He was licking some skull. Like a fucking freak. I don't remember which one it was. Fucking delicious hat. <laughs> I just imagine what he would say. <laughs> it might have been Bruce. Like sticking it right in his eye hole. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna give people nightmares. <laughs> hey man, that shit gave me nightmares. Cause it was so fucking graphically drawn. Just <laughs> fucking slobber. <laughs> well, it wasn't that the black hand too? Was that part the black hand? Or that was that guy, yeah. Yeah, that was the dude. That was the dude. Look, doing the licking. Oh, I was thinking, I thought it was Necron, the demon. No, it was that? It was that weird, like, like it was that really terrible villain yeah. that uh, used to just mess with Green Lantern, and then he just became. Uh, they gave him a really dark backstory. If I remember, he killed his family or something. Yeah, it was it was pretty bad. And then he like he, that black uh, ring just came up, and he's like, "Y'all choose you." He's like, oh, cool. Let me go. Let me go lick Bruce Wayne's skull for some reason. <laughs> Until Kyle, Ra- Kyle Rayner of the White Lanterns destroyed them all. Yeah, I think so. Did he? I'm pretty sure. That's so it's been bitch. a long time since I've read it, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, his first living creation was the first of the fallen, created by uh, his companion, uh, created to be his companion and the embodiment of his consciousness. <clears throat> his next creations were. Uh, the, uh, can't even talk. Uh, Samuel, Michael, and Gabriel, the most powerful of the Celestials. <clears throat> he gave Michael the power to create dull matter, Samuel the power to bring it to life, and Gabriel the power to put laws upon it. Uh, you made him a lawyer? Basically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, God also created the gins uh, alongside the angels, but differ from the them. alcoholic beverage? No. I'm fucking with you. Like, huh? <laughs> the hell are you talking about? <laughs> the gin. Yes, he created all the alcohols in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but different from them in nature. Uh, while angels were created from light, the gins were created from smokeless fire. As the source, he sent the hands. <laughs> So you sent them hands, huh? <laughs> you knew damn well. I, gonna... <laughs> I knew what you were going to look at me for that. Uh, out into the greater overvoid, uh, where they were tasked with creating new multiversal systems using seven connective energies. After the creation of their multiverse, each member of the hand <laughs> would pass and allow their energies to return to the source of all things. However, one amongst their number, Perpetua, which is one grade lower in this new system of DC Comics, mm-hmm. uh, she refused. She built a uh, vicious predatory multiverse, one locked in a never-ending cycle of crisis and rebirth. So it's almost like, like the <laughs> regular DC universe. <laughs> uh, her children, however, betrayed her, and she was imprisoned within the Source Wall, which is part of uh, the uh, the new gods and apocalypse and all that stuff. Her flawed predatory multiverse was made to restart. So now we've had multiple restarts in the DC universe here. Yeah. As the source, the presence became bonded uh, to a living, excuse me, became bonded to a being of unknown provenance known as the mother entity. The mother entity is basically what all the new gods use in that mother box that they all have. It's actually something? Yes. It's just high level technology. No, apparently it actually connects to a mother entity. 
like an actual entity. Okay. Um, through their connection, uh, though their connection was not marriage in any traditional sense, the mother entity is considered to be the source's bride. The mother entity is the energy uh, tapped into by the mother boxes of the fourth world. Zeus of Mount Olympus supposed that through the manifestation of the source, he birthed Ur- uh, Urgrund, the vast and unknowable realm of the old gods. When Ungrun shattered, it cast a god wave through the cosmos, seeding the fabric of the multiverse with the potential for godhood. First born of the god wave were the beings of Apocalypse and New Genesis. As the god wave moved through the cosmos, the second, panthe- uh, the second born pantheons, like the gods of Olympus, arose. According to the uh, Orisha Orunmila, one of the many faces he wore was uh, Mawu, creator god of the Dahomey peoples. It's a lot of weird names. It's but complicated. A little bit. Uh, we move into the rebellion. So this is all before <laughs> the rebellion. Uh, when the first of the fallen came to believe that God was crazy, God banished him from heaven and cast him into hell. The first became Satan and was the first of many others who would fall. When the rogue guardian Krona traveled back in time, he witnessed a great hand shaping and creating the multiverse. Some believe this to be the hand of the presence. God also created Adam and Lilith, ostensibly the first two human beings, and made them inhabit the Garden of Eden. But when Lilith rebelled, he banished her and created Eve instead. Eventually, the Jinns also rebelled under the leadership of Elias, the devil himself. We're tired of giving our wishes. Fuck all this shit. <laughs> But he punished them by making them uh, subjugated to the will of humanity. Damn, we gotta keep giving wishes. Out. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. So that's why all the jinns have to grant wishes. <laughs> you punish them. By- <laughs> it reminds me of this guy that came into my uh, my store and he uh, he bought one of these one of those prepaid cards. <laughs> and um, have I thought this on the vision on podcast? I think so. The about the. Uh, where he was wanting to do a return for yeah like he, he didn't want the car because he had to register it online yeah he had to put his name number address right yeah and so he was arguing with the person on the phone with the the, the help desk of that card and the, the car guy's like well we can give you a refund we just need your name number and address <laughs> so, either way <laughs> you're giving your name number and address i was like man i got him <laughs> that's kind of what he did <laughs> that's what he did to the jet <laughs> we don't want to get, we don't want to grant wishes okay you're gonna fucking grant wishes like, all right then all you gotta do is grant wishes then. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, be, uh, God began to speak to the host only in the form of the presence. Only heard and never seen, and some of his angels began to doubt, doubt his decisions. In part because of what happened to Lilith. Eventually, Samael led a rebellion against the presence, convincing many of, many of his brothers to write their own destiny. Uh, God did not participate in the battle, but ne- neither did he approve of uh, violence among his children. So Michael gathered several faithful angels and fought against Samael and his followers, who were eventually defeated and thrown into hell. Believing that Samael, who was now calling himself Lucifer, would have been happier away from him, God entrusted him with the government of hell, already foreseeing that uh, basically this would happen, that there was going to be a rebellion. As expected, Lucifer entered the Garden of Eden and tricked Adam and Eve into their exile from paradise onto earth. Now we have uh, the new earth. This is the next part of... This is just how fucking strong the presence is. It's like creator of everything. Um, But that was what God wanted. He wanted humanity to become mortal. Because now humans were mortal and had free will, being able to shape their own destinies, choosing virtue or sin, good or bad. With rebellion and sin, the concept of justice was also born. And some celestial beings, first Eclipso and then the Spectre, uh, that became the personification of God's wrath and vengeance, respectively. Eons later, faithful angels like Zariel and the rebels like Osmodel uh, redeemed demons like Etrigan and corrupted like Neron, which is part of the Blackest Day so- uh, series. Uh, they all played their roles in their eternal lives, but also mortals who contributed to each action to the great project. Uh, God also created Jesus of Nazareth. Go figure. Yeah. So he he did it in the Bible. He did it in DC. <laughs> Jesus is in DC comics. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, that his teaches, teachings started the religion of Christianity. The disembodied voice of God spoke to and empowered Jim Corrigan with the specter. God answered Spectre's prayers and resurrected the murdered Justice Society. The voice of God is the primary force responsible for Spectre's powers specifically. 
The hand of God was seen by Swamp Thing, Dead Man, and the Phantom of Stranger when heaven was threatened by the return of the original darkness. The presence also commands the allegiance of the host of angels, including Zariel. Lucifer continued to try to escape from God's plan, which eventually abandoned his place in hell and entrusted him to dream of the endless and began to roam the earth in his new rebellion. <laughs> it's like, you know what? You fucking want me in hell? I'll do what I want to do. <laughs> and I'm still part of God's plan, so it still fucks with him. <laughs> uh, Dream organized an auction between gods and demons to find a new lord of hell, but God ordered... <laughs> they hold an election. <laughs> an auction? It seems like they get to pick? No, he, he organized an auction. But what? Like, who, wants to, who wants the key to hell? An auction? I go with an election. The most corrupted thing in human creation. <laughs> but before that could happen, God ordered two angels. Wait, an auction basically is an election. Who's like, got, got more money? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never mind. It's perfect. Uh, he sent two angels, Remiel and Duma, to take possession of hell on his behalf, an authority that overcame that of all other auctioneers. I got a billion dollars. It's like, well, I, I created everything, so here, they're taking it. <laughs> You know, that pissed them off. It's $2 billion. Later, God gave his wayward son a letter of passage out of creation in exchange for a task that any of his other angels could have done. So he arranged for even faithful Michael to be expelled from heaven, and eventually he disappeared, abandoning his, uh, abandoning his tower in the Silver City. With his name beginning to disappear from all atoms of creation, a condition that could only end with its disillusion. When God appears in physical form, he sometimes presents himself as a gentleman wearing a bowler hat, dark suit, umbrella, and a gray mustache. Hmm. Then we move on to Prime Earth. Uh, in the midst of the nearing end of the universe, God sent Mary Seward down as a ghost to kill both Lilith and Cain. Lilith was forced back to hell by the closing of the Cain, the professional wrestler? <laughs> the Undertaker. He sent a boat down there. That was her whipping ass. <laughs> um... Transforming Tig back into a proper self in the process. The presence cursed the Herald Shra to reincarnate across space and time alongside Katar, Deathbringer, as uh, she decided to save him by reaching out and making herself visible to him despite the great slaughter he committed. After uh, Shera Thal and Carter Hall died, they awake in the sphere of the gods, uh, reverted to Katar and Shra. So basically, those are the two characters that become Hawkman and Hawk Girl. So they keep resurrecting? Mm hmm. Jeez. The presence explains that Katar's debt is repaid and offers to allow him to pass on and to restore Shra. However, they do not wish to be parted, so the presence offers them another reward to be reincarnated a final time in their favorite lives, and they agree to be restored to life in the 1940s as the Golden Age mortals Hawkman and Hawkwoman. 1940s? Jesus, mm -hmm. of all the times. The presence is the creator of the Council of Eternity, a circle of ancient wizards based out of the Rock of Eternity that oversaw and defended the ancient world judging and uh, judging the guilty of for their sins until they were betrayed and wiped out by Teth Adam. The only survivor of the council was uh, Mamaragon, who, who uh, exiled Teth, naming him Black Adam. Black so now Adam. We, we also have the aspects of the presence. So we have uh, the Supreme... Uh, the Supreme takes many forms, while many are analogous to the Abrahamic God. This is not uh, universally true. So we have him, he takes on the form of the light, a prim uh, primordial aspect of the one above all, dating back to the moment of creation. Through interaction with the darkness, the light, once an immaculate and infinite whiteness without flaw, became part of the first narrative and created within itself a story. So it's basically that one large, pure, perfect light. Basically, that's where all like stories started taking place cool. in the darkness. That's probably where DC makes their movie, their uh, comic book ideas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, <laughs> they legit have a light it's just somewhere. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> and then he can also take on the form of the source, which is uh, the new gods' interpretation of him. 
uh, the great energy binding creation. The source is responsible for the power behind creation. Much of the underlying architecture of the cosmos was forged by the source, which sent the, its hands into the overvoid. <laughs> it sent the lands. <laughs> uh, in order to create new multiversal systems, places where new stories might grow and thrive. He also had the Hand of Fire, a form used by the Source to communicate with the new gods and occasionally those connected with them, like Superman and, in one situation, Renee Montoya. Renee Montoya? You remember her? Yeah, of all the people. It's like, here's the fiery hand, bitch, you want to slap with these hands? <laughs> Jesus. It's a random detective in Gotham. A little bit. So basically, I guess she got to talk to God. Cool. Must be nice. <laughs> uh, what, what, what do you got to talk about? Hey, what's up? Why am I here? <laughs> I wouldn't give away. I know why I'm here. I'm like, why are you here? <laughs> and lastly, about the the presence himself, we have uh, his powers. So basically, he has uh, obviously God physi- physiology. So he's divine entity with, of infinite power. Uh, he's got omnipotence. Uh, he's the source of all creation, dimensional travel, immortality, metamorphosis. So he can basically be, he can show up <laughs> looking like anything or anyone. They're doing way too much. This is what I've been my description, right? Uh, what, what is it? The president's powers? It should be like, it's God and done. <laughs> <laughs> they went into depth. though. <laughs> Why? There's not, <laughs> it's redundant. Did that, if it's God, that means it's supposed to be the most all powerful being of all time. <laughs> So, and nothing above them. Yes. So there's no reason to be like, oh, he's got super strength. He can see through walls. He got, I mean, you, yeah, yeah. All you have to do is say omnipotence, omniscience, and omnipresence. There you go. He's got it all. Yep. And there's also layers. So when you look at the original, um, the map of the multiverse mm-hmm. during the new 52, and then kind of going into some of the newer series, because they, They basically adopted a lot of this stuff into the new series of DC. Um, You start off where you have the uh, the orary of worlds. So you have the multiverse itself, like the little planets and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, You go up from there. You have the frequencies of uh, I'm not going to try to pronounce it. It's K W Y Z Z. Basically, K W Y Z Z. K W Y Z Z. Uh, Dallas quiz. I guess that'd be quiz, wouldn't it? K W Y. K W Y Z Z. Uh, cucumber. <laughs> uh, it's basically a radio universe home of the uh, Crocky the Defender. What the fuck mm-hmm. is that? Uh, your guess is as good as mine. I haven't read that far into it. Uh, up from there, you have the Speed Force. The Speed Force basically encompasses... Ah, the Speed Force. Mm-hmm. It encompasses the Orary of Worlds. So it's like that... It's above... Like, if you're a person like Superman, or like even the Flash, you may be able to use it and get to it, but you can't go past that. It's basically the speed of light. Huh. You can't unless you're teleporting. You can't. I thought, I thought the Flash did go past it. That's why he fucked up and made the Flashpoint. He flash eventually point. did. Yes, yes. So, but the, like he, he couldn't go into the universe past that. It's Speed <laughs> Force. Uh, then you have uh, Wonder World. Uh, basically, it's uh, an orbiting creation itself and unimaginable velocities. Wonder World is the world quarters of the long lost theocracy, a team of stupendous primal superheroes. <laughs> stupendous. Mm-hmm. Then we have the underworld that's in the realm above that. Then we have. Uh, How do you have something called the underworld above something else? Yeah. By the very definition, it's underworld. I, I guess. Uh, it's not above. It's like in a uh, higher dimension, I guess is what you'd call it. So you have a couple of things that are within this higher dimension, and they're all basically within the same scope or the same like um, the same sphere of reality. You have the underworld. You have dream, where dream stays. Oh, my dreams are fucked up sometimes. You have hell. You have nightmare. You have uh, the Skyland, New Genesis, Heaven, and Hell. Those are all within the same like uh the same level of reality playing a reality yeah so all of those be considered within the same sphere basically and then uh that's all technically within a sphere called the sphere of gods so like the abstract form of beings and stuff like that would live within this sphere up from that in uh the reality itself you have limbo limbo mm-hmm 
Limbo is basically the home of the lost and forgotten of the orrery. Uh, Limbo is the furthest edge of the manifest DC universe. This is where matter and memory break down. Hmm. So concepts, everything. It's where that one eyeball lives. Probably. (laughs) The D creator. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) uh, From there, you have the monitor sphere. The monitor sphere is above all. That would be perfect. They end the series with just two comic books, just Batman and Superman. And they, they they start realizing that something's really off lately, <laughs> and that's when you set up the 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 miniseries. Uh, that, that would be a good idea, though. They're trying to bring, bring back. Yeah. So yeah, like you start off with like all these different comic books, and then you slowly whittle them down just just two. And then you end up with Batman Superman. Yeah, like the, well, the, I guess you could always do the Trinity too, so you could always have Wonder Woman, Batman Superman, Wonder Woman. And then something happened. They're like, wait, this is this something's wrong. Like, what's going on? Like, we're missing people. There's. <laughs> That would actually kind of be cool, though. They just won't do it. You're welcome, DC. My (laughs) goddamn creative genius. And then uh, the last two levels within the map of the multiverse, anyway, we have um, the source wall. So literally nothing can go past the source wall aside from the source or the presence. And Batman would prep time. Exactly. He'd probably been out there several times. (laughs) Which is uh, just crazy. (laughs) Uh, we also have a, a description of some of these realms. We have the Orrery Worlds. Uh, that's the main 52 universe enclosed by the bulk of the bleed that the uh, Green Lanterns like uh, Kyle Rayner and a few of the other ones could actually travel through. Hmm. Uh, the frequency of Quiz. Uh, it's a radio universe home to Crackle, the Defender. The Speed Force Wall. Uh, this is the place where the Speed Force lies. Uh, we have the Underworld, which is the home of the gods that rule from a different religion. Apocalypse, which is the realm of Dark Side, opposite to New Genesis. Hell, the fiery torment of Hell Lords in the place of eternal damnation. Nightmare, the shadow of the dreaming cast upon the darkest dreams. Skyland, home of the old gods. So that's like Zeus and all the other pantheons. Uh, New Genesis, home of the new gods. Heaven, the paradise, silver city, the word, home of the angels and divine beings. Dream, the place that's absent of reality, home of dream of the endless. Limbo, this is the land of retcon to those who are forgotten and those who are yet to be. Land of retcon? Yeah. That's where it goes, huh? Yep. That's where retcon goes. Okay. Limbo. <laughs> Monitor sphere, the dwelling place of the monitors and the source wall. The wall that is the out- uh, outermost part of creation. Nothing goes past this. And then you have the uh, the over void, which is where the presence. It's basically the blank page of. Comics. Man, I'd hate to live in that universe. I'd have any DC esque. I had to be a regular human. <laughs> Gotta live my day to day life. <laughs> Knowing damn well. There's the, something that there's far shit, up. There's shit always going down. <laughs> and, and literally, it's in places that you'll never be able to comprehend or see. But I'm just like, man, I just, you want to go to the movies tomorrow? Like, I don't know. Is, is it going to bust right through and fight in Dark Side? What I find funny, though, is that there's also a uh, scale that was put out, and it kind of throws everything else off a little bit, because you have a, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight classes, but there's not that many within each class. Mm-hmm. So you have, uh, from top to bottom, you or no, I'll start from bottom to top, you have minor dimensional characters, so that's like the Green Lantern Corps or the Captain America, or Cap- Captain Adams, so they can, um, they can uh, affect dimension stuff. Oh. Huh. Uh, you have up from that the major dimensional, which is uh, the green, like the swamp thing. You have the demon Etrigan or Zariel, the angel, so they can affect things within dimensional times. Uh, you have uh, minor universal, so you have people like um, the emotional spectrum entities, like uh, Parallax, uh, Ion, all those others. Uh, Merlin. Would there be Green Lanterns be on that too? But they're drawing power from those entities. Oh, okay. So the entities are higher within that list. So that does make some sense. Uh, the Lords in, uh, of Chaos and Order, Phantom Stranger, uh, Guardians of the Universe, um, the Wizards of Eternity, and stuff like that. Uh, from that, you have Major Universal, which is Trigon, High Father, the Spectre. A Trigon, that was quite the character. Yeah. In Teen Titans, for sure. <laughs> uh, Dark Side, Eclipso. 
But then we go into minor multiversal, so they can affect multiverses and not just a single universe. Uh, Lucifer, the Endless, Anti-Monitor, Over-Monitor, uh, the World Forger, the Empty Hand, and Imperiax. Hmm. Which I haven't heard Imperiax in a long time. It's an oh, old character. Don't remember him at all. Early 2000. Uh, up from that, which is... it. According to th- to this list, they put Lucifer within the minor multiversal, but they put characters above him, even though he's technically like if you're only going by uh, the original list, he'd be third or tied for third anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they classify two. They classify five beings above that. Uh, we have a major multiversal, the the Blue Brother of the DC Comics. So that's the whenever they had that crossover of the Amalgam series. Is that one guy? The the blue and the uh, the red, the two brothers. Mm-hmm. And then we have the Ultra Monitor, because you know we're we're playing Digimon here, going Mega d- d- Ultimate d- Digimon. <laughs> and then we have Minor Metaversal, which I don't know why they classify these above Lucifer because it doesn't make too much sense, and they classify it also uh, above uh, Michael which doesn't make any sense because if they're like direct people below the presence and the presence is the strongest, it doesn't make a lot of sense. But uh, minor metaversal, we have uh, the judges of the source, uh, Perpetua, the one that uh, fucked with the entire stuff. And then we have Axel, Axel, Ar- uh, Axel Asher, the one that kept the two brothers from fighting. Oh, okay. I don't know how they classify that above any of this. Hey, man, sure. they stopped. They ate. No. Hey. Hey. <laughs> both of you know. Triple. Basically. Triple X. Access Axel Asher. <laughs> <laughs> we all know Stanley has something to do with that. Probably. And then they classify at the very highest, the major metaversal, the Overvoid, which is basically the blank paper that DC exists on. Mm-hmm. And then the Source. Cool. So those two do make sense, but... You'd have to move up Michael and Lucifer to the minor metaversal, this like second tier down from the top. But again, like I said, a lot of it's up to um, opinion on a lot of these because you can find reasons for different characters to be at the very highest or the very lowest. It just like, you know, there's going to be a bunch of people that is like, well, Batman with prep time. Here it is. Here's my here's my theory right here. The presence is really just Superman a billion years old. The, you know, the entire universe is gone, right? The <laughs> darkness has overtaken the universe again, and he gives up his life to re- reignite the universe. Done. <laughs> God dang, I'm amazing. Sadly. Does that not make sense? It, it makes more sense than what they have going on in the comics right Damn, now. I'm, damn, I'm good. <laughs> it's perfect. Superman's pure light mm-hmm. energy. He, he'll, he'll outlive everybody. He has this story of himself. Darkness takes over the universe again. Boom. Mm-hmm. Blows himself up. I mean, look, after just, what is it, uh, Superman 1 million? So after, uh, what was it? He hooks up with Lois Lane one more time, <laughs> and then he kills himself. <laughs> <laughs> A million years. <laughs> Still be banging Lois Lane. I can see that, too. Man, she, he must, she must have that gold. <laughs> If you're going to wait that long for it. 15,000 years. Jesus Christ. It's like she died. It's like, fuck it, I'm going to sit in the sun. Basically, yeah. Like, man. I can't do this no more. I'm sitting in the sun right now. She had all that kind of goodness, and now she's gone. <laughs> now, wait a minute, I can bring her back. And that's the only time he got it again is when he brought her back. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> but that is everything that I've got on this. Uh, any questions? Any last comments? Um, no. Cool. Just over here giving it hands. <laughs> My favorite part. Just the hands. The hands coming out. Just just imagine hands just flying everywhere, just giving out hands. <laughs> it would be funny though. <laughs> <laughs> just slapping the shit out of everybody. You get these hands. Like, oh That's why I knew when I wrapped God. it in a couple of times. It's like, oh, they're going to get the hands. It's like, my God, it's the hands again. <laughs> All right, well, we'll see you guys next time.